Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, it's a concept that was once dismissed as all in the head or just simply ignored, and it's now talked about so much that Brisbane will host a national conversation about it next month. The forum could provide a blueprint for future treatment of the condition. Senior Sergeant Daryl Green will be sharing his story. Hello, Sergeant. I've got him now. Hello, Sergeant. Hello. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your story? Fifteen years ago, I was at work. It was as calm as we are speaking right now. In the early hours of the morning, beginning an investigation in relation to the threats, a gunman's ambushed uh, our vehicle. He shot me in the face, shot me in the shoulder, shot my partner, shot the sergeant. So a moment of calmness to a moment of madness. Is it difficult speaking about it? No, it's actually been quite th therapeutic and it is still therapeutic to this day. Well, the worst thing you do with a traumatic event is uh, push it down and pretend like it didn't happen. How did post-traumatic stress disorder present itself to you? Uh, initially, it was hypoarousal. I was uh, very concerned about my own safety and so it was crowds. The psychiatrist explained it to me, well, your body's got into this... Uh, uh, looking after itself, looking out for danger. And so if I was dealing with one person, I can keep an eye on their hands, what they were doing. But as the crowds uh, grew, I can't keep an eye on everybody. And then I would suffer um, anxiety, uh, my heart would race, my eyes would dilate, and I'd just have to you know, get out of that environment. So that was one of the first uh, issues that, that confronted me immediately. Was that like a fight or flight instinct? Yeah, pretty much, yes. Yeah. Fight or flight on the night. I went and fight on, on the night. I got out of the car even though I'd been you know, shot up. I um, went after the gunman, but I couldn't find him. I went after my sergeant and uh, to find him and come back and stood guard over my partner. And But then later on, this continued. Even to this day, I'm still suffer, suffer from a little bit. Like It's commonly I'll be out running, a car will run over a, a pizza box that's been left on the road and I'll jump. And But I know now, I go, oh, it's OK, that's just part of you know, the remnants of the shooting. And um, did it affect you in other ways? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, depression, uh, anxiety, uh, you know, uh, sleep was a huge issue. And there was times I just didn't, didn't really feel like living. I thought there was no light at the end of the tunnel. It was just all stress, trauma and bad news and operations. And uh, But fortunately, I had uh, excellent support. The number one support is being my parents. I could never put them through having a suicide in the family so I was very lucky to have that close support and, and in time asking for help that's a big one come out the other side how old were you when this happened I was 27 I've been a police officer nine years and that's the only thing I've ever known left school and joined the police and uh, at what point did you realize that um, something was going on after this event that you had you know a condition that needed to be treated I Initially after it, I was just a bit stunned and dazed, having a few dreams, a bit of hyperarousal, but then unfortunately there was another Queensland police officer shot approximately a month later, shot and killed. He um, uh, was a dog squad officer in Rockhampton. He was hit once, they hit the femoral artery. You cut that artery, you got four minutes to live. Uh, he died. We were all shot multiple times and lived. And I think in the back of my mind, my, mind, my own mortality came, to, you know, to be questioned and then it followed on depression, anger, anxiety, just a real spiralling downwards and I thought I was going crazy but I was, but I was smart enough to reach out for help and I, I sought out a uh, well-respected psychiatrist. And how are you now? I, I'm you know, making the most out of life actually. I, um, uh, I uh, probably the, you know, I still occasionally have a few dreams and, and, and a few things that, that do occur. But I'm um, really, you know, I love my skiing, I, I love my running, I love my food, I love the people I work with and making the most from life. And when, you know, when there are bumps in the road, and that um, I've got some pretty good strategies to manage those. So what sort of strategies do you have, Sergeant? Uh, the first one is, is exercise. Is Running is a, um, uh, just getting your heart beat up. And for me, that's running. That's, that's a, a great one to bring down my emotions. If, if, I've, if I've seen something, it's upset me. So that, that's, that's a big one. Uh, getting plenty of sleep, concentrating on that. Uh, if, if, I, if I need to go back to there's been times where I've had some things occur in my life. I've gone back to a doctor and gone back on, on medication. But a big one is talking to other survivors. Uh, that's 
and I've uh, talked to people who've been shot, I've talked to colleagues who've had to shoot and kill somebody, and just let me know, realise that oh, what I'm going through is just normal. This is nothing new. It's been there since the beginning of the time. The first time that I recorded post-traumatic stress was in the poetry of uh, Greeks when they were recording their soldiers waking up in the middle of the night screaming out, recalling the battles they'd been involved in. Um, so when you, you mentioned they're speaking about what's been going on, which brings us to next month's forum. Um, could you tell me a bit about the forum? Yes, this is uh, very, very unique uh, and probably they believe it looks like the largest forum for post-traumatic stress in the world. It's bringing medical professionals who deal with post-traumatic stress, trauma, uh, doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, to Brisbane uh, and to find out what's be best practice and you know, where they can prove what research needs to be done, what government should be investing in, how they can help support people. And so it used to be swept under the carpet. The English army had shot many a soldier who was suffering, but they called it shell shock at the time. It's post-traumatic stress. They were shot for cowardice. It wasn't cowardice. They were just affected by PTS. And so we've come a long way. Still got further away to go. Um, but this is a really great start. And are you still, you're still a police officer? Yes, I'm uh, still a member of the Queensland Police. And how do you find, um, you know, working as a police officer and also having PTSD? Uh, you know, that person tried to take my life away and career away and everything else away. So uh, every day that I'm um, still a member of the Queensland Police is a, uh, a victory for me, a victory for the community and a victory for the service. So uh, I've, I've got uh, amazing friendships, uh, I have amazing support. Inspector Dave Stevenson, at my toughest times, he was there and was an amazing individual. I had a police psychologist, I was a Vietnam veteran that helped me over some difficult periods. So, uh, yeah, I'm really proud to still be a member of the Queensland Police and you know, serving the community. And, and how do people find out more about the forum? Now, if people want to find more about the forum, they go to ptsd15.org, O-R-G, and they can learn about it. And if they want to learn about my speaking, I uh, now have secondary employment, they can go to twiceshot.com, and I regularly speak for um, to Queensland Corrective Services uh, in their uh, various programs. Well, Senior Sergeant Darrell Green, thanks so much for sharing a bit of your story with us today. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the uh, interest in uh, PTSD and this particular forum, and I'm looking very forward to speaking there on the day and sharing my experience, but also learning um, myself what, what's, uh, what's occurring in that, in that uh, environment. More needs to be known, doesn't it? Thank you very much. That's Senior Sergeant Darrell Green. He'll be speaking at a forum next month on post-traumatic stress disorder about his own experience, and uh, lots of people, experts, will be at that forum as well.